Tom, though, he's playing against the Tom Kench. So he's definitely going to have to worry about where Ignar is and Minions the denial been. of his very impactful ultimate. Absolutely. It's going to be a fun one here. I want to point out Reckless's uh, secondary rune choices. His, his primaries are all very standard. Reckless went domination secondary for the when you jump, you gain bonus uh, lethality, which is a sudden impact, and also eyeball collection to get a bunch of bonus AD. So he's going for a pretty all-in heavy sort of rune page. Statistically, in solo queue, uh, sudden impact is actually not that great on Tristana because you don't rocket jump actually all that often. But he's going for all ends, it's going to be on for him. Yeah, like we said, you can still go for those kills. Here we go with Ignar, making his way into the jungle already. He gets a lick off of uh, Zert Sting, and yep. he's going to have to return to lane. So as uh, unlucky. Down to two thirds HP, does have Iron Skin in second wind. He did go for the, the more sustain based stuff based on the matchup, which makes total sense for him. But yeah. still not going to be easy to play Nasa Nanar, I feel like. Yeah, and as we said before, Thaldrin here, Captain, huge playmaker for Turkey. This is definitely a guy that should be talked up. And he got his hands on the Nar. He's got a good early trade onto Soaz. And meanwhile, down bottom lane. Yep. Yeah, they're okay. He got the stun off. Of course, there's no chomp just yet until these three minions die right here. But once that happens, Zerg's has got to give some more respect over to Ignar. You can tell the type of game they're looking for, though. Meanwhile, yeah. uh, Stone Mage has gone for buff to buff. So he still is level two. But technically, that's all Jarvan needs to be able to get off the combo, as well as Electrocute. So. And the hop's already gone behind him. So does not have a way out. Flies a little bit of time, and he's not going to burn much. Here comes the rest of the team. The flash to follow. Oh! Oh, first blood. Yes, Yankos. The first blood king is here already. Looking for more to his crown. Add another notch to the belt. Looking to knock down Stone Mage. Bit more damage coming through. 100 HP left on him. Out goes the Jarvan. Ah, Bug Champ saves Dog Champ. It's got the <laughs> counter here. Yankos comes in. Not only that, but Yankos did the three camp blue side clear. So after the bad trade from Soaz, or even probably before it, they were already thinking around this you know, vulnerable uh, yeah. Nasus here up on the top side. So really do like the choice here from Yankos to hang around. He's being very efficient, killing a camp yep. while being in range for this counter game. If you watch the minimap, he takes the blast cone, jumps over, immediately gets in to flash on Thaldrin before he's able to generate enough for the transformation. Mm -hmm. He had one more, you know, either auto attack or Q or something to get off before the Meganar would have transformed. Yeah. Uh, but Yankos is able to kill him off before that does come through, and they almost even took down Stone Lounge after. Yeah, him. and I really got to give props to, to Yankos. You saw him kite his Gromp up. This is before they ever saw Jarvan. He's cutting the crop up the top side towards the blast cone. He's waiting for the counter gank, thinking it's going to come in. Exactly. That's why we talked about the forethought put into it yeah. uh, and the planning here. Jungling is so much about that. And now after that gank, you have to think about how does the jungling actually affect the lane matchup? Because Nasus, this is going to be probably a couple extra points here from Soaz into the E. He does have Airy himself. You can clear the waves very easily with it, uh, but you can also get good harassment down. Mm -hmm. And now that he has uh, gotten some extra breathing room here uh, and a little bit of extra time uh, up on this Nasus, we'll, we'll see him scale a lot more comfortably into the late game. This is the case so right now. Yanko's going to take away some of this Gromp gold for his opponent. Was able to see, yep, Stomach had 8 CS and, and the two buffs. He knew what camps were taken. And Runs away to take away the bottom jungle. Sweeps out. I don't know if he actually saw Zerg Sting, but certainly uh, Kha'Zix is known, but jumps over the wall and stays safe for himself. So Yankos just fine. And has a little bit of camps left in the bottom jungle to clear if he wants to. Level four to level three in Stone Mage actually going to go for round two towards the top side. But with Soaz under the turret, not an easy dive. But might just look to scout out the jungle. Yeah, there's not much he can do offensively, so it's much more of a getting control here for Thaldrin to allow this Nar to continue to try and pressure. You know, mini form very annoying for Soaz to deal with at the moment, but Soaz should be able to last hit there under the turret. As he said, getting a couple more points in the team now. Ooh, early smite! Yanko steals it away! An early smite from Stomage gives that one an option. Has the flag and drag out, but got nothing for the counter jungle. This is such a bad spot for Stomage. He is level three, no mana. He can be stunned. No, no flash. flash. Good juke. Oh, if Huey had held onto that E a little bit longer and made him commit to going upwards, that might have been a kill for Yankos to chase through. But either way, Stone Mage just nothing much to farm, and he's down two levels. This brings up another really cool topic about the preseason, though. Uh, people were complaining so much about jungle catch-up experience that it, it was heavily nerfed. Now, not only is it less experience, but it's also only on the big monsters. Uh, so, Stomage, so Mage, 
is level three, and Yankos has already been counter jungling. Level five Kha'Zix yep. plus Vision in his jungle. It's absolutely insane how big this lead is. Aldrin's Mega Nar. He's going to be able to stun so as he kites it back. Now the damage that puts here at PoE secures the kill for the top lane. Thank <laughs> you very much. I did all the work. Thanks for the kill. Yeah, that feels good for Power of Evil. Uh, I guess Yankos was like, fine, whatever. I'm already pretty fed. I have a giant lead. And they're all going to continue to pressure here, but this is a breath of fresh air for uh, Stone Mage because, as he said, he was completely counter jungle. There's vision all over, and now he gets to slide in. Yeah, it's bad for him. His top laner died, but he gets to soak up some lane yep. minions, like, at least. Well, up to level four, he's keeping up in this game. Just a uh, very little bit here. Frozen kills the control board. And he's got some CS, but Pinky on a kill means Mew, he's doing better in this lane. Power of Evil's not only forced Stone Mage out of his own jungle once, but got that kill top lane, so it looks pretty good for this Comet Zerith. Nice little pillar blocks off Ruckus, but Rocket jumps away, down to one third HP. Really gonna have to keep track now. What is Yankos gonna be able to do with this lead? Because it is absolutely massive. Uh, now that he is level six, and he has been able to evolve the R, it opens up everywhere for gank opportunities. One of the little tricks that I've learned here in the preseason, walking through the brush, you can get almost all the way to the middle of mid lane, uh, but if you just activate your R while you're still invisible, it extends the range and it extends the duration there, so you can gank anyone without them you know, having any sort of vision on you and hold on to your leap until they react with some sort of flash or whatever their escape is. It really does make uh, his level six ganks impactful, so he can now uh, basically have his pick of any lane that he wants to go to. And we were talking about the bottom lane. You know, they, they wanted to get into it. Reckless even took the uh, sudden impact rune to try and have some all-ins on Tristana. So maybe he shows that area a little bit of love. Sure. Might happen here for himself. Power of Evil uh, does not have the uh, kills yet, but he went for free boots. He'll get them a little bit. That'll be fun for him. His runes. He's got the biscuits as well. Gank also looking for something to do in this topside jungle. Zergsting. I believe might have seen him with that ward, but gonna come kite back around. Puts the ward down for the blue buff. Now something in a 1v2. Chomps the blast cone gets away, but now the blue buff's gonna be attacked by Yankos. And the ward sees where Jarvan is coming from. So it's a bit of a race against House. This guy can join. And open up for Zeet now wants to get his team back Ooh. in at the blue reset. Oh, wow! Zero four. They dodge it all away, but at least gets the blue saved so far for Stone Mage. Oh man, that is not the way you want to start out a skirmish. But here comes four members to tackle this blue buff. Can they take him down? It's in fog of war. They're gonna get it. The Q goes over to Frozen. Thank you very much. Blue for him. All right. So hey, even though you missed the the Jin shots, it did make Europe run away. I can't complain too badly about this one. Twelve hundred gold difference game though. And there's still a lot of wounds to lick right here. The bot lane is going to be the place to be attacked. Here comes the next bit of assassination. In they jump. Gamba. Got to get one already. Looking for number two. Zergsting going to run out of health. Down he goes. Yankov making the Turkish scoreline zero for four. And the kills is done. <laughs> I like the last top here from Reckless. He jumps in, gets some to impact, and immediately flashes back out. Actually, uh, now we have Stone Mage coming down as well. He's low health. He's a bit alone. Yankov's going to get a bit of damage. Okay, no choice to be had, but with the wave pushed in, it's going to be just some XP gain and nothing else. We were right, though. Yankos went down bottom to try and help out, uh, you know, Reckless, and they were yep. able to make use of it. So Reckless was able to grab one of those kills. Meanwhile, Soa is on the top side. Oh, he's chasing him with her. So, timed out now. He pops the ultimate, and Thalgan's like, but I can just walk away from you. He gets rid of the uh, nullifying orb shield there, but otherwise not a ton to be gained. Hold still up for the uh, Turkish top laner. Watch that bot lane fight again. Remember, this is after uh, they forced the Jin cooldown, so there's no ultimate. There's no chance for him to use it, though, as PoE was hitting his ult shots. There's Reckless, hops in, immediately flashes out as uh, Zerxing turns around to give him the bite. But it was nice. He, get, he provided the slowest that PoE could land a few more shots there, land that last ulti charge. And I think it was actually the right choice, even though flashing away seems silly. I, I do like what Reckless did there. I like people going for all star plays. I an all star free. tournament. I like going for all star plays all the time, unless they're on my team in solo queue, in which case, calm down, don't feed. Look at this damage I put Zeet not yet. Health down to one half HP. Whoop. And they're going to have a little bit more coming in as Ignar brings some teammates. None of the CC landing. The Juke shoes are in, but does it matter? Typical NA mid laner dying in the tower dive, and now Ignar gonna get shot down as well. Double kill, but Yankos mopping up in the mid lane. Five because of him. Oh no, PoE just whiffing all over the place here, and Zeitnot gives him the yeah. one two.
bullet to the head, and he's going down. Meanwhile, Yankos is able to kind of stabilize it there for yes. Europe in the mid lane. Remember, uh, Europe still does have the 1,000 gold lead, but uh, Turret taking a lot of damage here. Reckless wants to do it. Moves. Reckless jumps in, gets the charge down. A few more shots will do him in. That might be enough for lethal damage. Z not chases in, does get killed, and Reckless jumps back out. The best he could have done, and now Zerg Sting is just going to get splatted so as to get his first kill of the game. Ah, the Turret gold a little too juicy there. Yep. Reckless is able to utilize the Guerrilla Warfare skin and jump in from the outside. Does end up getting another kill, so... As he said, you know, the world's AD carry is very, uh, very much still viable. And now that the early game, they're getting some kills onto him, he's going to scale extremely well. Oh, yeah. You know, the Omega Squad going to get themselves the first trip of the game. Slowly but surely. But no one's going to stop them. No one else rushing turrets nearly as fast. Bonus of gold, 275 apiece to the bot lane here of the European All-Stars. Feels pretty good for them. That gold lead, quite massive, about 4K. Take another look at the highlight here that we had. Power of Evil gets the ticket in under the turret here from Ignar. Throws off the stun. Don't need that one. Q is dodged out very nicely, though. Can't really blame him for that one. Nice moves there from Jin, and they're able to get the shots landing this time around, even with the flashes. Ooh, still base. Just never saw him coming. Just so juicy right there. Yanko's able to slip in work with Kha'Zix. Three kills now for the European All-Salt Jungler. Man, this was the whole time. You literally, I think, couldn't have known other than trying to guess. So. It's the freest thing. The yeah. first time I, I utilized that and I was able to get all the way across mid lane, I was like, wow, <laughs> this is really good. That's very, very strong. <laughs> it is, it is. Welcome to having an easy roll, Kobe. Here we go in the top lane, though. Stomach's coming to help out Thaldra. So as uh, says, I'll just keep farming. It's okay. My Q's on half cooldown. I'm ulting just to get the farm going. Also, he's got a stronger jungler, so here they go. Cross is in the mix. PoE shows up for a couple of shots in and helps get the first kill across. Diego's watching back out the Cataclysm. And now Soaz has turret aggro. He's got to be careful. When are they going to join into this one? He's pulled the aggro. Nice jump back, and no stun's going to land. Stone Mage! Woo! Survives the comedy, gets away with it. All right, here comes another challenger. Frozen has arrived. 1v3. Ulti comes across the pressure. They're flashing away. Will the damage be enough? Malefic Vision is just not visual enough. Nothing picked up there. Top lane turret now undefended. That will be turret number two for the Europe All-Stars. Meanwhile, we have a little bit of a rotation. Bottom lane for the Turkish squad is rotated up to mid to try and uh, hold this one, it looks like. And the European All-Star duo are also going to answer them. And it will be a standoff as top lane turret goes down. That's two turrets for the European squad. And the map is really starting to become their territory. Yeah, they're taking over a lot of this right now. We'll see if they keep pushing forward. Getting rid of the mid lane waves for now. Ocean Drake is up. It's still useful, just it's not that like three, 10 minute ocean is super bonkers insane. Either way, though, PoE has actually neglected to go for Merlin Amakon, just relying on Mana Flow Band and maybe this later Ocean Drake for his Mana Regen tools. Reckless going in with the Ankos. The double jump squad is here. So has Flash getting for the Wither on the Zeet Knot. No way out for the Jin. A quick chop. Make sure he's safe. Thanks to Ignar. And now Stone Age stuck alone under the turret. A critical kill for the European AD Carry All Star in Reckless. And he's just destroying this game now. 404 for Yanko, the whole squad doing so well. And they're also going to be able to take the objective afterwards, icing on the cake here. Now with all the outers down, all objectives are basically just on the checklist here for Europe. They get to check off the Ocean Drake here now. And it is going to be the Zombie Ward Snowball that we kind of talked about. They can just move in, plant everything with vision, and really make use of the giant gold lead they've been able to accrue in the early game. Because if you look across at the Turkish squad, mm -hmm. you know, yes, there is uh, a Nar up there, but he's a 0-3 Nar. He hasn't been able to get a huge amount of gold. He's, yeah. been, he's been utilizing the matchup pretty well and, and earning that CS difference, but uh, with all the kills coming through for Europe, uh, there's not much that uh, they're going to have to worry about. He plugs the gold holes a bit with that turret kill up there, but it's still more than 5,000 apart. Snipe! Power of Evil! Grab uh, himself the blue buff, I do believe. Top side as well. Ignar has uh, been able to walk up here behind Thalton. I don't know what he's going to be able to do as uh, support Tom Kench, though. 1v1 with the team captain. <laughs> Gets ulted and goes, uh, still chasing you, though, because Yankos is on the hunt. Looking for this one here. Thaldrin gonna be back to Mini Nar. Gets the bit of move speed from the W pass, but here comes Snipe number one, two, and not range for three, but the damage up was so high. The tongue lashes in, and another kill for Yankos. He's unstoppable. Ah, uh, Tom Kench 
beautiful here. Able to get the tongue lick for the extra slow. Then also turret aggro denied, eats him up. I think it's the only time anyone's called Tom Kinch beautiful, Kobe. <laughs> Uh, I ab I appreciate multiple forms of beauty, uh, including big totes. Yes, great. You know what? That's fine. Not my taste, but you know what? You do you, buddy. Throw the two and kills. Reckless on the beautiful Tristana. You know what? I, that was terrible. We're going to move on. <laughs> uh, either way, though, Stomage looking for some action on the bot side. Almost predicts the flat of power. People goes over the knockup. Either way, though, with the uh, Demolish up here getting some damage, they're not going to stay for it. All right. Turkey looking to get some ground back for themselves. As you said earlier, Thaldrin was able to get the top turret before they chased him all the way back down and were able to get the kill. So they did get some gold back for themselves, but it's going to be difficult to mount the comeback this time around. Here you go. So as with the dive, able to get his ult off after. Actually, didn't even need it. It was the Tom Kench once again. He's the real star. He is the real star. Absolutely. Beautiful champion. Doing well for himself. And now, Rift Herald also going down. Yanko's going to grab that. Yes, he will. We'll see what the next target is going to be. 3-1 to one in turrets, 12-2 to two in kills. Europe definitely bouncing back quite nicely from their loss yesterday. And looking to maybe wind this one down when they get the chance to. Still only 17 minutes in. Got quite a bit of League of Legends to go. Uh, but waiting for the next objective here. So I was looking towards the bottom side. He was about to score off against Thaldrum. Both of them have left the lane for now, though. You can see how afraid Zaitna is of what could be around. You saw him sniping from far away, trying to get the wave clear. So he'll be fine. Has some wards to to keep himself a bit safe. Yeah, plan for Turkey right now is kind of the defensive huddle here where they mostly position themselves around their turrets with uh, pink wards through the their own jungle to try and make it safer to diverse from turret to turret and wait for a mistake from, from Europe. You know, the one thing about All-Stars is everyone looks to make All-Star plays and YouTube highlights. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't actually punish those if uh, Europe decides to go for a dive and Ignar is not around to save them. And then Turkey might be able to turn something around. As we've been talking about, though, you're pretty comfortable in their situation. Yep. Looking pretty good for themselves. I want to point out Yankov's not quite going for the full hardcore build that uh, we had seen out of Karsa yesterday. Has gone for Green Smite and also getting himself towards the Fade. So not quite as hardcore, but looking for more Zergs. And goodbye, Ooh. deleted already. Turned back to an egg. And now over the wall, Stomach just a flash out for this one. Couple snipes from Zaitna, and it does not seem to matter. A couple of nice jukes away. Got rid of some of PUE's shots. And now the bot lane turret under fire, though. And the whole squad is here ready to deal the damage. And a 4v5. 5 being in their squad. Bot lane tier 2 fall. Rift Herald still available for Yanko. All right, I'm going to check in here on the stacks for Soaz. Because that's the yes. coolest part about Nasus. 147, it was just at a couple of seconds ago. He did go for that Emax I was talking about sure. uh, with him. So it's not the highest numbers that you're looking for because he wasn't yeah. just concentrating on stacking it up. Uh, but still, he is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Going to provide the tankiness. He has gone for the Righteous Glory. We saw him before yeah. flashing in just to get in range of Wither. Now he won't have to use his Summoner spell. He can just use his Speed. Uh, and that really is one of the most annoying uh, spells to deal with. Yeah, absolutely the case. And Good luck. I mean, the thankful thing, at least a little bit for the Turkish squad, is none of them really need attack to be that badly. So Wither is like a bit less annoying than it could have been. Oh, the XP time. Yankos gets the Rift Herald on the wrong spot of the map. He just parks it there. Maybe that was on purpose. I'm not sure. Oh, my word. He's gone. Cauldron <laughs> deleted. Who needs stacks? Plus six for Soaz. And he's got another one. Jumps over the wall, gets suppressed, but it's not going to buy him much time. Oh, no. Perfect timing. Soaz. Not quite going to get it. He's going to save it for the stack. No, he's going to take it with the E. No extra stacks there. Triumph keeps Yankos alive. I think it was Triumph. Either way, slinking away. And now Soaz has someone else to target here. Stonemage. Not a lot of mana. Oh! <laughs> Ignar, you are beautiful. Power of Evil gets that kill. 16 to 2. Where are you going, boy? Ignar licks him up. Able to take him out of the combo. And another kill goes through. All right. Eyes on Reckless now. He's got his crit combination in addition to the uh, Quicksilver Sash already built up, so he has no one to fear at this point. Yeah, not even Malzahar can look at him scarily and keep him in place. Reckless knows how to get away with those tricks. Blue buff. Oh no, not the evil eye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Reckless got an eyeball collector. He's ready to go for all of this. It's not even a problem. So <laughs> I, I, I want to say it's on purpose. Thank you for going back to it, Observers. I think it's intentional. To where Yanko's gonna be like, all right, when we're ready to go, I'll kill the Krugs and send it out. I wanna say it's on purpose. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt here. 
Yankos is a mastermind. All right, my theory is that Yankos just likes collecting pets. <laughs> and, uh, what's be he wanted three sizes of Krug here, but <laughs> there's no other size of Krug, so best he could get is a giant scuttle crab. There are actually three, though. You get the, you get the medium one, and it turns into two smaller. You can get all four sizes of Krug. He's going to have to kill one of them. Oh, no! Do You're going to kill one of your own pets? Hey, but they'll multiply. He'll get twice as many pets. It's like when you've got a pet stick. Someone breaks your stick in half, and you got two sticks. Oh, man. You got twice as many pets. Yankos knows how this works. That's He's a really, a half man. That's a really, a, you know, a cup half full way of looking at <laughs> yeah. killing one of your own pets there, Freak, <laughs> to get two pets. It's like starfishes. They both become real okay, starfish. Okay, right? okay, okay. There's, there's even a uh, precedent. But yeah, 60 to 2 and kills. 10,000 gold lead. Europe is definitely smashing this one right now. And the question is, at this point, it's almost like, when will they close out? Looking right now like a bear and bait here as the items continue to push towards fruition. Throws it. Yeah. Has to run away in fear. The pet master is scary here in this one. Looking for a nice back and forth, but he's been getting away. And sadly, I mean, especially with the infinity boots, he's just not that tanky and can't really withstand his front line at all. A little more damage for Zeit not. And Turkey forced away from their side of the map. Yeah, this is the problem here. They're dealing with just a one-man artillery situation with Power of Evil. He's not even super fed on Xerath in the mid lane, but you know they're all so far behind. They have no defenses. <laughs> that they're not able to deal with. Let's see if uh, Soaz is gonna let the uh, nope let Shelly out. Nope. Shelly remains in the cage. All right. Oh, dodges uh, away nicely. Zeitnot. Dodge just as many as needed, stays alive, walks away cleanly. I feel like we need to start a petition online or something. European fans get out there and convince Jankos to let Shelly free. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag free Shelly one, I think, would be the, the tag we'd all use. And let's see, mid lane about to be under fire, you have to imagine. The waves are gone. So as. Ah, hey, so as lets her out. <laughs> now, how will they use this? What's the. Important strategy here, Freak. They're pushing on the bottom side. They're going to create pressure, yeah. draw them away from the Baron. Exactly. They're saving it for Baron. So as here to add some stacks to split push alongside Yankos' pet. It's beautiful. 23 minutes Dang. of work have been put into this strategy. <laughs> the timing, impeccable here. Yankos <laughs> on the backside of the Baron. And they're trying to bait in Zerg Sting. They've got oh, him. Oh, he's doing so much damage. Zerg Sting feels the sting as he walks away from the claws of justice. That Yank off. <laughs> that was the best. He has a lot of titles. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Pokemon Master, Master, Claws of Justice, First Blood King. Uh huh. Who knows, man? This guy. Aldrin just gets to attack Shelly. I mean, that's why they kept her, her in 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 the the kennel. They don't just to run around wild. Just runs into like wild Nars and dies. Poor Shelly. Never got to even see a turret. Yeah. Turns out, Yankos was a better pet owner than Soaz. Yeah. Soaz very. Uh, Unreliable here. Wait, I, I trust you to watch my cat. What did you do? Well, here we go for an engage. And the pillar is up, but does it matter? Snipe one, snipe two, three, and four coming in. Stomage again cannot get out. Ignar finds the catch. Reckless now godlike got the kill credit for this one. But all the work was done by the support there. And now back towards Baron. They might look at the jungle of death. There's no smite to be worried about. Okay, Zite not, and it's gonna be Ignar blocking the shots. Reckless completely safe here, and Ignar, it barely even tickles Tom Kench, but then they go, and not much of a chance to stop this Baron attempt at all. Yeah, Tom Kench is one of those guys, you can tickle him, he just never lasts. Oh, Pewee lands a pretty big stun here, but they're gonna just take up the Baron and go for the reset. Easy, easy, and clean, nicely done to Europe so far. Only giving him two deaths and a single turret on a split push, otherwise they have been really in control of this game. Kind of doing it by the book, right? Making sure they're getting the leads, setting up the vision. They had one good teammate where they killed the jungler, and that was enough for Baron. All right, Baron empowered. Trinity Force built here on Soaz. We're pushing away the Nasus Dream. Gonna get the recall off. He does have teleport, so he'll just get right back out onto the field. Uh, you want to get those two points of pressure, as always, with your team. Don't want to let the other end of the claw hanging here. This is Ignar on the top can. He's on the front lines. He saves people. He breaks combos from the enemy team. Mm -hmm. He kills people. He does it all. He protect any attack, dude. He knows how to do everything. <laughs> Ignar's got your back. With the 12,000 gold lead, Yankos about to get Baldrin's back. Look at the damage output. There's no way out. Give it over to Power of Evil. Why not? Three, <laughs> one, and five. Eight coming to Well done. Two of those at least have been steals. BOE's had a lot of off-screen steals. Yeah. They've been looking good. That's how you're supposed to do with the champion. Yeah. Pretty sure that, KDA. that was what he was built for. Mm -hmm. 1,480 damage to the snipe from Zyknot. 
might never find a champion for that much damage, though. This could be a very difficult game. That will be for Turkey's bot lane inhibitor turret falls. Reckless still has yet to die in this game, by yep. the way. He's got the most kills on his team, fully equipped to uh, jump in there. We're looking for those aggressive rocket jumps. See, he's still got Ignar around to keep him safe. He goes a little bit too crazy. Lands a lightning crit. Feels pretty good about that one. Want to point out, by the way, Static Shiv actually does heal you with Ravitus Hunter. Mm. You want to go for that one as a uh, as a marksman down there? Static Shiv actually does work that way. The knockup though! Where's Ignar? <laughs> He's not to be seen! Reckless is way too much that, but a kill comes through for the dog champ. Soas gets one. And the Zypes come through. Will they find some cleanup? Ignar there to save Soas the top side. His favorite Fnatic member, clearly. Another snipe comes through as the Jin is gone. Zaren says, I can do it better. Yankos now dominating. The one of the two remaining deathless members of the squad. A pillar gets him away though. But the chase is back in the leap forward. Frozen Force to kite away with Power of Evil. Able to rampage with his fourth. And here comes the attacks. The flash forward. They need a bigger boat. They've got this kill picked up. Yankos getting himself the ace as now the Nexus is open with the turret. Nice shots from BOE here yeah. on this there. It's impeccable timing, and they're gonna be able to take this one. All right, first game of the day. Gonna go to Europe here as they wait to find champions to kill. To pad their stats, make it look as good as they possibly can. Take it! Get Couple in there! Of fancy footwork moves right there, but Nexus will fall. Europe gonna win the first game and improve to one and one, sitting at their showdown with LMS later today. European All Stars said they learned a lot from yesterday from their loss, and they're taking a lot of it out here today mm -hmm. already on the Turkish squad. This is, is interesting because it does set them up. I mean, we now basically have. Europe, LMS, and Korea, all viable options for getting out of this group. So this group, very exciting as far as, uh, you know, who is actually going to be able to exit at the end here. Yeah, Korea at 1-1, one one. their last remaining opponent would be Turkey here on your screen. European LCS 1-1 one one as well, and they will have to face LMS, who, you know, against many people's considerations, did take down Korea themselves. Yeah, 2-0 so. oh yesterday. Yeah. So strong. Which means a good chance of a three-way tie at 2-1, and one, which means shootouts. 1v1 Howling Abyss for tie breaks. That's going to be exciting stuff, and we'll see who comes through at the top of this group at the end of it all. It's going to be exciting. But it does mean that the Turkish squad now down at 0 and 2 do not have a way of advancing into the groups or out of the group stage, but they can still put some impressive performances in. They will still face Korea later today and show one last time what they're all made of. Everyone go full, every man for himself. Mo. Yep, it's all about creating those highlights, see what they can pull off later in the tournament. Some interesting picks, you know, definitely can gain you some notoriety. Oh, sure. Already. Yeah. Meanwhile, this game, Reckless there, he did die at the end. We we had successfully cast the curse <laughs> in yeah, it was 10 perfect. seconds before. It was perfect. You've done very well for yourself on that one. Yeah, he hasn't died, and he inted. All right, Reckless, uh, unlucky there, but... Come on, man, he had a great game. He had, he had a great game. He had a great game. He absolutely did. I think Yankos had the best game of all of them. He was absolutely incredible there. The the top lane gank worked out. He, he Classic better jungler wins, dude. Better jungler win. Yankos was actually incredible. But I, I mean, I do want to give him credit though, right? Sussing out. Um, yep. You're gonna you're gonna gank Soas level two. I'm gonna do these three camps and go to the blast cone. Like he planned the path out from the very beginning. Yep. Three camps up to blast cone. Oh look, I found a Jarvan. First blood, and it was just kind of beautiful. So I always respect. I always respect the obvious forethought where he's like, I know it's coming. I'm gonna call us out before you ever do anything, and he was right. I so, love that. Yeah, and it's something where you want to hedge your bets a lot too, because sure. if if you wait around long enough and, and you're not doing anything, you give up too much. That's why the two for one there uh, mm -hmm. is the optimal strategy. Meanwhile, though, that was an exciting game number one. It was exciting. Europe one and one could improve more at the end of the day, but now let's send it down to the dash and the analyst to break down that game. Thank you very much, Freak. The European All-Stars shaking off their loss yesterday and putting together a very dominant game here on day two. And it all started in the top lane. Soaz getting his opportunity to show his stuff on the Nasus after taking a loss to it against Khan back at Worlds. A lot of action in the top lane very early on. Yeah, I like that he took Airy, so he had Sorcery Adaptive AP, took the Doran's <laughs> Ring and the Wave Clear with the E and maxed that first. But really, that first blood came down to the jungle routing from both junglers. Yanko starts on the best side for Kha'Zix to get up there with single target camps and then goes straight up there. And then I don't know what, you know, Snow Mage was doing because going buff to buff is a little strange when you're still going to go for a level 2 gank and not a level 3. 
Yeah, and we can roll the cup, but I mean, this could have been a level two gank so much, so much earlier. Mm -hmm. You can just simply go red to top, right? Like this is Jarvan doing a level two gank. Why are you showing up for a level two gank after you've already crossed the entire map? Why not then wait for level three? He does show up. He is only level two. Nasus is level two as well because it's so delayed. And so as did a great job delaying for Yankos to arrive. It felt like there was an inevitability though when he came in with where the Nasus was, but the flash, especially the mechanics, mm -hmm. weren't beautiful on the Jarvan either, and it just was a bad look for. Yeah, the thing I really love about this play as well is we got to see Yankos doing his gromp, kills it, and then he's already in route before mm. they even know that a gank is mm. coming. So it was going to happen one way or another that Yankos was getting up there. It's just the timing of the Jarvan is just so strange for a level two gank. I mean, it's a very simple point. If it was red buff into top lane gank, no chance Yankos is in position for the counter gank. As it played out, it was perfect. And it's a level one Nasus, right? Yep. Which yep. you really can't do anything to survive that. If you are pushed up at all, level one Nasus against the level two J4 that already has a red buff is almost always gonna be that guaranteed kill. Uh, and that's why you're trying to do a path like that to pick on Nasus in the early game. But when everything goes wrong like that, the whole plan kind of falls out the window. And, and that's and not the a... only time that everything went wrong <laughs> yeah. for something, somebody rather in this game. I wanna head to the bot lane here. Let's take a look. 10.30 into the game. Zeitnot gonna come away with a two for O oh on the European All-Star dive. And I mean, this is sick. Like, he basically just crossed over POE, dodges the stun, dodges the W, steps out of the queue, goes back, W hits, fourth shot, execute there. That was embarrassing for POE. This is our Acer Predator replay. Hard to say, though, who's at fault here, you know, or who's... <laughs> Is it? Well, is I mean, it like, <laughs> is it, was it was it fantastic play from the gym, it's right? Both. Sidestep on everything except for the, you know, and then the Zareth. It's, it, it's one of those situations where it looks like he's missing by a mile, right? Because he jukes one way and he expected to juke another. I know you guys had North American scouting grounds last week. All Star is kind of a world scouting grounds. We saw Carson, so we know he's probably mm. going to China. He showed his straps. Another NA import. Oh, no, no. He's, import. Europe he's the That's European the scouting ground, baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we, was, we do, there we was an EU in front of that name there, Papa Smithy. I don't know if you saw yeah, those that. Those are definitely some EU school shots. <laughs> but you know what I'm really sad about this game? I feel like we had such a missed opportunity from Europe. When Khan played Nasus into Soaz, we got to see the Rift Herald dance yep. on Fnatic, oh. right? They had the Rift Herald caged. That is the BM we deserve yeah. for All-Stars. <laughs> you leave Shelly in the cage until so you're you get ready Baron. to end the game. You get the Baron, you free Shelly, and you make him dance, and it would have been the perfect revenge to what happened to Soaz at yeah. Worlds. That's 100% intentional, by the way, to put her there. You yep. can do it over the wall and put her behind the Krugs and trap her, right. and then you can release her at any time. And they let her out, and she gets nothing. She doesn't even see a turret. That, oh, we need to see now it was before the It was the most anticlimactic release there at, in that moment. Shelly died watching for nothing. her push the lane to, to achieve achieve nothing. Yeah, Free Willy finally gets freed. <laughs> Face plants on the jump. <laughs> yeah, oh nice. my God. Get oh out, my the movie ends. Just ruined that movie. It's, it's terrible. terrible. <laughs> yeah, but, but the other interesting thing that this does, right, is it kind of opens up that possibility for the three-way tie. Again, yeah. only, it's only game one of the day and a lot could happen. But with the 2-1 possibility, you know, record for a three-way tie, it could make this group very interesting. Yeah, EU would have to beat LMS, and the way they played in that early game, I think they could be able to do it, but it's just bringing it home. And I love three-way ties. The shootout <laughs> could happen. Especially when it's 1v1s. Like, I think that would actually be super hype when you're at All-Stars and you have the potential to perhaps knock Korea out by 1v1ing who is very likely going to be Faker. Like, that is kind of the stuff of Legends. That, that is, is definitely an yeah. asterisk I'll have to refer to a lot in the future. I mean, it would be really, <laughs> really hype. Yeah, and Papa Smithy in his book of asterisks. <laughs> And, and like you were saying earlier, like if it's a three-way tie, it's seeded by win time, yeah. right? And that, that was, was a fast. fast win by Europe, so they could be waiting in the finals if it is a three-way tie to play the winner of the 1v1. They're setting Bob, themselves so up good. well here after game one on day two. We'll see if Europe can secure a spot, a late, uh, a secure a spot rather out of groups later in the day. Coming up after the break, North America and the team from Southeast Asia class for a spot out of group B. Don't go anywhere.